Mr. Mongoose Colorados. It's called the Surgeon Sturgeon. Surgeon Sturgeon and Professor Powder. What about to the master race? The Isn't master? that your people? No, they well, yeah, the master race, yes. It's called to you, Bob. Thank you for taking me here. It was a great trip. You know, I've been thinking, Eric. There's something missing in my tribe. I'm not really sure what it is, but uh, I'd like to search for it. You'd like to search for Mangus? For you Mangus? Mean, you want to look for the skull? Hmm. I'm not really interested in finding the skull, Eric. It's a, it's a search. There's, there's something missing there. I think I want the search for the, the self-esteem of my people, the, their manhood, you know, there's something missing. I really don't know what it is. I mean, we've been told for years that we don't really, what we had in the past didn't really mean anything. You know, our religion, our philosophy, our language, our, our land, they don't mean anything. And I think that the, they really do mean something. I mean, we've been called heathens in the past, mm -hmm. and that really bothers me. You're a tribal man, you know what I mean? Maybe you can learn something from this. You know, I think if you look, you'll find your own Mangus Colorado's out there. Well, maybe he's been riding there up front all my life, but I haven't quite caught up with him yet. Sometimes I feel like a pretty old man, you know, from an old and tired part of the world. I don't know. I understand what you're trying to look for, but maybe it's, it's up to the young now. It's up to the children. Thanks a lot, great white brother. What? Incredible words of wisdom from the white man to the Indian again. I just can't believe it. Leave your shit for the children and their future, huh? And you're gonna go, when you die, you're gonna go to heaven. That makes a lot of sense. You know, to an Indian who thinks like an Indian, that's a lot of, that's a lot of nonsense. In fact, that's a criminal act. Hold on there, hold on there. You're a pretty wild Apache. Don't, don't scalp me mentally. This is the second time in a few days I've been given hell by Indians. Just common sense. I mean, what right do you have to leave everything for the children? You, you destroy all the trees, you destroy the air, you leave your nuclear shit all over the place, and then you, you, you sneak off when you die and you say, okay, here, children, clean it up. <laughs> that doesn't make sense to me. But what do you expect the children to do when their, their elders dump their garbage on them, betray them, and leave them here in a pile of trash? Well, they go happily to their, their wonderful heaven in the sky. What do you expect the children to do? Have you ever heard of what we mean by the elders? Not just the older people, I mean uh, the elders. We respect them and uh, we expect them not to give up on us, not to dump their problems on us. They're our guidance. They're respected for their wisdom. They're a key part of the, of the people, the wisdom of the people right there. I think I'll go over to see my aunt, Mildred Cleghorn, the leader of our tribe. I need to ask her blessing for this search for Mangus, Colorado. What I'm really trying to seek is the spirit of our people and see if it still exists. I've heard horror stories about how we really don't exist as a people anymore. I, I disagree with that because I, we, we still feel a part of the tribe if, we, if you really take each one individually. It might be because naturally we have disagreements about different things and we kind of separate from one another, but way down deep I think we're still very much Apache. I'm proud of my people, real proud of it. I think also that we've just, we have gone through an awful lot. I appreciate what Geronimo said, that he surrendered in order to keep the people alive, and I want to be a part of that. I think that we have a great history. And, uh, and that's, that's what I want to keep alive. What did Geronimo do that, that made him special to you? To me? Yeah. 
Well, he was a leader, and a lot of people said that he went out and killed people, but he didn't until someone did that to him first, and then he, he left, went to hunt, and came home and found his entire family dead, killed. And he vowed then that every Mexican and every white man he ever saw, he'd kill. He surrendered in uh, 1886 because he said he didn't want the uh, tribe to disappear from the face of the earth. And he knew that they would if he kept fighting because they had already lost so many. And so he said that the few that are left he wanted to keep. So he surrendered. And they promised him to be in prison two years and then they would send him back to Arizona. But they didn't do it. Mm -hmm. And they um, forgot. They kept us for 28 years. My father was a small boy, probably about eight years old or something like that, because he remembered St. Augustine. And the thing that fascinated him was the ocean. You know, all that water having come from Arizona. And uh, he said that they used to, the kids used to sit on the wall. And as the waves came in, they could see those huge waves coming toward them. And that's what they enjoyed seeing them and watching them. How long have you been sitting here looking out that way? Did you know my grandfather, Sam Houses? He was over here. Hey, will you take our picture with the dummies? <laughs> Jeg kan se landet ditt, gamle røde arme. Jeg tror du sitter oppe i fjellene der og ser på oss. Why don't you leave me in peace, you old Apache? 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 What do you think as Apaches uh, we can uh, offer other people? Ah, uh, stamina. <laughs> and, uh... Stubborn is a meal. <laughs> they tried to kill us off while well, you're still here. Yeah. <laughs>